this, but we're in this series called Jesus Said. And that's because Jesus said a lot of stuff. And actually, he used stories to paint pictures of truths. So what Jesus was saying, it wasn't just nice things. And they weren't just nice stories, but actually there was deep truth behind them. So we want to discover that together. We want to explore that together. And today I'm going to talk about a story about grace. So I'm pretty excited for this one. Who, who likes grace? Yeah? That's good. We're in church. <laughs> Should like grace. So grace is part of, of, is part of the kingdom culture, which we are part of, but it's also one of our cultural values here at KDM. So we have four values. Grace is one of them. It's just a way to focus on something of the kingdom and be that to the people around us, be that to the city. And I'm sure all of you here have realized by now that in different countries, there are different cultures. You know that? And then within different countries, there's different families and you have different family cultures as well. And so I want to tell you a story about when I was dating Annalena because, because she's obviously from a different family and then she's from a different country as well. So there's like times two of different cultures. And the thing with different cultures is that people say different things in those cultures. And you get to experience new things that you haven't experienced before. So one of the things that her family would say, it was actually her dad, he would say that life isn't fair. And this is quite a normal thing for him to say. Something would happen, maybe one of like Annalena or her brothers and sisters had to do the dishes and they weren't happy about that. And he'd just tell them life isn't fair. And this kind of bothered me because I didn't grow up hearing this. So it made me think about it. It made me think, like, is life actually fair or not? Because I believe in a God who is good. And so I, at that point, I was thinking life, life is fair. And now Annalena's dad, who believes in the same God, who is also still a good God, is now saying that life isn't fair. So this bothered me a bit. And... To add to the, the confusion, to add to my questions, there was a situation one time where we were having dinner and it was time for dessert. So dessert comes out and it was kind of interesting what we were going to eat because we we're a bunch of adults or nearly adults and dessert was blue jello. So who knows what jello is? Yeah? So we were having blue jello for dessert. There I am. I'm going to hopefully marry Annalena one day, which it happened, spoiler. It happened, and there I am with her family, and we're eating blue jello together. But what was confusing about this, after hearing her dad saying that life isn't fair, is that one of the members of the family, they went into the kitchen, and they came back out, and they had a weighing scale. So I was like, what is going on here? So next thing, they start weighing out each of our portions, <laughs> each of our portions of the jello. So <laughs> I get my portion. What, what adds to that is that actually two of the other members of the family were watching them do it to make sure they weren't cheating. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. I've been hearing how life isn't fair, but apparently when it comes to jello, it has to be fair. <laughs> so this made me think, actually, Deep down, I think we all like things to be fair. So I think we're all like the one who, who got the weighing scale for the jelly. That actually we want things to be fair. We don't, want, we don't want to see people around us treated better than we're treated. And generally, we don't want to see people around us treated worse than we're treated either. We want things to be fair. And as I said, we're part of a kingdom culture. We're part of a kingdom culture. So I want to look today at what Jesus has to say about the kingdom and if it's fair. So it, we're looking in the Bible, we're looking at Matthew. We're looking at Matthew chapter one to, sorry, Matthew 20, chapter 20, verse one to 16. And we're looking at a story about ver workers in a vineyard. So there's a landowner, he owns this vineyard and he's basically getting workers and then offering them a wage and we get to see what happens there. So the first thing he does is early in the morning, he goes out to find workers. And how he finds workers in those times is he goes along to the marketplace and he finds guys who are standing around waiting for work. 
and he hires them. He offers them a day's wage. In the Bible, they, they say it's called a denarius. I guess that's their currency, but that's literally a day's wage. So he offers them a day's wage, they agree, and then they come back. What's interesting to me about this is obviously in those times, they didn't have internet, they didn't have mobile phones. So this was literally how they'd hire people. I, I had a friend who, uh, who lived in Morocco and they still do that there today. So if he needed an electrician, he doesn't just call someone up, he walks out of his house, goes to the market, finds a guy there who's an electrician, he offers him money, and then if the guy accepts, then they go back, he does the work in his house. So th this is what's happening here. He's finding people to work in his vineyard. And so the first group of the people, he hires them early in the morning, and, and we see they're happy with their wage, they're getting paid, but we see that actually three more times at different times in the day, he goes and he hires more people. So he goes back to the market, maybe he realizes there's more work to be done, goes back to the market, hires more people, he tells them that he'll pay them what's right. And then we come to about an hour before the end of the day, so it's late, it's late in the day now, about 5 p.m., work's gonna finish at six, and the owner, he goes back to the market, and he still sees some people who are just sat there, hanging around, waiting for work. So he talks to them and he says, why? Why are you here? What are you doing? And they said that no one has hired them. So what does he do? He hires them, he brings them along, gets them to work for the last hour of the day. Now this is all fine, everyone's happy, until it's time for people to be paid. So he starts with the last people who are hired and he actually pays them the full day's wage. So they get the denarius, the full day's wage. Everyone's still happy, no problems. He starts to pay the other people and he gets all the way down to the first people who are hired. And they were hired hours and hours ago compared to the last people. He pays them what he agreed to pay them. He pays them a full day's wage. But the problem is they're not happy anymore. They start complaining. We can actually read in, in verse 12 what they say. So these men who were hired last, uh, they, they say to the owner, they're complaining, that these men who were hired last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. So they're not happy. They're complaining because even though they actually got what they were told they were going to get, they started looking at the other people around them who also got that same amount. So if this happened to you, do you think that would be fair? Would you be okay with it? If you worked a whole day and someone came along, worked the last hour, got paid exactly the same? No, nah, generally not. It's, yeah. I can see why not. I, I'm not sure I'd be too happy either. But we can look to, to what the owner responds in verse 13 to 15. He answered one of them, friend, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you jealous because I'm generous? So it didn't seem fair, but when, when they started talking to, to this guy, he told them, I'm not being unfair to you because he did exactly what he said he'd do. And I think what's important here is to realize that what's fair, it, it's not down to the workers to decide what's fair. It's actually down to the one who hired them. It's down to the owner in this story. It's down to him to decide what's fair. And it's down to him to decide what to do with his money and how he pays people. And we can actually relate this story to God as well. Because Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like this. So we can relate it to God. Because God, he calls us. It's like, he, it's like the owner going out to the market and finding people who want to work for him. God actually calls us. And then he offers us a reward as well. And this reward that he offers us is eternal. It's an eternal reward. We get to be with him for eternity. We get to be in heaven with him. But when we look at the story, we can actually compare it because some people, they end up like accepting this call from God very early in their life. Some people end up going through a whole load of trials and difficult times. There's people who are, who are persecuted. There's people who like actually physically hurt for what they believe. And these people, they receive the, the reward that God promised them. They receive eternal life. They, they get to be with him. But we can also see that some people, 
they join much later. They accept God's call in their life much later. There's actually a story in the Bible where Jesus was dying and the guy next to him who was also dying, he, he actually acknowledged Jesus for who he was. He said, Jesus, remember, remember me when you're in your kingdom. And then Jesus turned to him and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So what we can see is actually that man, he got the same reward promised to other people. He gets the same reward no matter how long or hard he worked. It's, it's about the promise. It's about the one who decides. It's about the one who decides the wage, who decides the, the reward. So this is important to remember because sometimes it's easy to look around and compare and then start to complain. But actually we need to remember that it's not about us. It's about the one who decides the reward. It's important as well to think actually about the character of the one who decides the reward. Because it's great to say that, that something is, is fair because the guy who pays is the one paying. But actually, we need to know what he's like. Because in this story with the landowner as well, he offers to pay the people a wage, but that doesn't make him fair. And he pays everyone the same wage, but that doesn't make him fair. It's actually the fact that he's stuck to his word, which makes him fair. It's about his character. So we see that he was faithful towards these workers. He was faithful towards them. And we read as well, we read how he said that he's generous. He wants to offer everyone the same amount of money. And that's out of his generosity. So it matters as well, not only about the fact that the guy he's paying gets to the side, but it matters on his character. Because if he isn't faithful, then these guys can't trust him. And they might, the, the first guys might not have actually got what they were offered in the first place. They might not have got what they agreed on. And the fact that he's generous as well, they could trust in that. If they knew that he was generous, they could trust that if he was going to be generous to others, then he'd probably be generous to them as well, or at least be faithful to them. And we can relate this to God again. So God is the one who calls us, but he's also the one who's faithful to us as well. He's going to keep, he's going to keep his word. He's going to keep true to what he says to us. And he's generous as well. We can trust in the fact that he's generous. What's amazing about this story, what I love about it, is it's really a picture of God's grace. So a lot of you put your hands up when you said that you like grace. I assume you know what grace is. Josiah mentioned it a few weeks ago. Grace is undeserved favor with God. So in a way, or grace in action, is when God blesses us when we don't actually deserve it. Who here has been blessed when they haven't deserved it. Yeah? And like we can see this from God, but we can see this from others around us. When we're around generous people, we get blessed in ways that we don't actually deserve. So it's a picture of his grace. And when we see how the workers uh, acted, they, they didn't go after the owner to find him and to offer their services for a certain price. It wasn't about what they could do. And it wasn't about how long or how hard they worked either. So they weren't the ones going to him, but actually he was the one coming to them. And we can see this with God as well. It's not about how, how much we can work or how much we try come to reach him, because in our own efforts, we can't actually do that. But it's about his grace. So we need to see things from a view of God's grace, because he's actually, again, he's the one who calls us and then he's the one who is faithful to, to that, to what he says. He's the one who's faithful to how he says he's going to reward us. And he's the gracious one as well. He's the one who, who blesses us when we don't actually deserve it. It's all about him. So the thing is that we actually failed God. People, people fail God. He, he gave us a way to get to him. Or he gave his people a way to get to him. He actually made an agreement with the, with the Jewish people. He made an agreement. He gave them a set of laws. Their, their like way to live and their way to, to please him and their, their, the requirements that, that were needed for them to make their way to him. But they just couldn't do it. And I'm sure most of you here will know that we can't do it either. 
if any of you have tried to make yourselves good enough for God, it just doesn't end well. So we have to trust in the fact that he is gracious towards us. We have to trust in the fact that it's about him and about the fact that he actually loves us. Because his grace is just an expression of his love. He loves us so much that actually he wants to bless us when we don't deserve it. So according to our logic, the question of is life fair, according to our logic, actually, and looking at God's grace, I would say that God's grace is completely unfair because we just don't deserve it. In, in our view of what's fair, we get what we deserve. We do something, we work hard, and we, we get a good job. Or we do something, and we, we reap from that. We get what's fair. But actually, we've done things which are wrong. We've done things which have taken us away from God. But instead, he has, in his grace, he blesses us. We don't actually deserve this. So is life fair? Is God's grace fair? I would say that God's grace isn't fair. I think we just need to change the question. I think we need to change the question from is life fair to actually, God, how can I see this through your grace? How can I see this through your grace, God? Because it's not fair. And I feel, for me personally anyway, I often look around me and I compare with other people. I compare and I try to work out what's fair. But actually, I need to change the question. I need to say, God, how can I see this through your grace? We need to see things through, through God's grace. It's like, it's like a pair of glasses. We need to put on glasses, like where you get them, where they're, they have a colored filter. It's like you put on blue glasses, you start seeing everything blue. We need that, but with God's grace. We need to see everything through his grace. And it's going to change the way that we live. It's going to change the way that we relate to people, change the way that we do things. There's one line that really stands out to me. And it's, it's where the, the landowner says to the workers, are you jealous because I'm generous? Are you jealous because I'm generous? Because as I said, I can compare with people around me. I can start looking at the way that people around me are blessed. I'm wondering, God, why aren't you doing that to me? Or if I'm praying for something and someone else gets an answer to that prayer, and I'm like, God, <laughs> why, why then? Why, why, why haven't you answered me yet? I want to share a story with you uh, about Annalena and her iPhone 13. So we, we were in the process of moving house or moving from an apartment to a house, moving from a furnished apartment to an unfurnished house. So we were praying, we were asking God for his provision, praying and asking for furniture, for a car, for all these things. And then one morning, Annalena comes to me and she says, I've been praying and I've asked God today for iPhone 13. And not just, not just any iPhone 13, but the green one. So my sister actually knows Annalena is the, the one who gets what she wants. And that's not because I buy her everything, but it's because God really answers her prayers specifically. She asks specific things and he answers specifically. And she did need a new phone at that point. It wasn't like I didn't want her to pray for it. She needed a new phone and she was asking for the iPhone 13, the green one. So we go on our bank account and to, to our surprise, there's 500 euros that's been sent from Belgium just into her bank account. And we're like, wow, like, I guess this is for an iPhone. We've been looking into it. I, I'd worked out that 500 euros would be enough to, to put a like, down payment and start paying it off. So I was pretty excited about this. I went on uh, Orange, tried to work my way through the Polish, and found out that as a foreigner, it's pretty hard to do this. It's pretty hard to like, pay off a phone over, over time. So we had a conversation. I said, Annalena, we just need to pray for the full amount tomorrow. So we went to bed. I was quite excited waking up because I was going to check my bank account and see, see what was there. And I was leaving the house before Annalena even woke up, so I was checking out my own. And <laughs> to my surprise or amazement, I guess I should have been trusting, but there was 2,000 euros. <laughs> so that was double what we needed for iPhone. 
So it was actually enough for the green iPhone 13, plus the headphones that you have to buy separate, <laughs> plus the charger thing that you have to buy separate. <laughs> we had more than enough, so it covered all the extra things. And uh, why, why am I sharing this story with you? I'm sharing it because, like, yes, it was my wife, and this kind of benefits me in a way as well. But, but actually, it mattered where my perspective was. It mattered what lens I was seeing this through. Because if I could see it through the lens of grace, I was able to celebrate what God had done. But if I was comparing with her, and if I was wondering, God, why aren't you answering my prayers? Like, where's my iPhone? <laughs> well, then, then we get to the point where I start complaining. Because if we compare, then we end up complaining. So we have to see things through the eyes of God's grace. And then we can celebrate with each other. We can celebrate with those around us when they're blessed. We can celebrate when we're blessed as well. Because what's crazy to me about these workers, it's not like they weren't blessed. Because they actually, the first ones who came, they got what they were told that they would be paid. Like they got what they agreed. They were happy when they agreed that wage. It's not like they weren't blessed. But as soon as they started comparing with the other people and seeing how blessed they were, they started to complain. So we need to be people who see things through the eyes of grace so that we can celebrate instead. And then we'll be able to celebrate when other people are blessed, but also celebrate when we're blessed as well. And we won't miss out on that. I think the key to this, the key is to realize how undeservingly blessed we are. Because all of us have been blessed in a way that we don't deserve it. That's what God's grace is. It's favor, it's blessing in, in times where we don't deserve it. And none of us deserve it. We've all, we've all done things wrong. None of us have met God's requirements. So when we understand how undeservingly blessed we are, then we're free to celebrate with those around us when they are blessed. What's also amazing to me, like with this story with Annalena, is that God is actually specific. He loves us, he wants to bless us, and he's specific and personal as well. So even just in that way, the way that God treats people around us is gonna be different to the way that he treats us. He's good to all of us, but he's good in his specific ways because he's personal. So in Psalm 103, it said that God satisfies our desires with good things. And that's the same for each and every one of us. But for one of us, a good thing might be our iPhone 13, for another, it might be something completely different. So we need to, again, see things through God's grace so that we can celebrate when that happens. And I can guarantee that all of us here have been blessed in an undeserving way because the ultimate display of God's grace was when he sent his son. Because basically, as he was calling the workers in the story, he's called us, but, but we weren't fit to do that work. We couldn't actually do the work that God was asking us. We couldn't, again, we couldn't meet his requirements. So what he had to do instead was send someone who could do it. So this is where he sent his son, Jesus. And Jesus then did the work that we couldn't do. He was involved with God. He kept all his requirements and he did it in a way that we just couldn't do, that we kept failing. And he then had to actually die for us because God is fair. He's just. So when we do something wrong, he has, to, he has to pay for it, like he has to pay us back for it. If we do something wrong, we deserve punishment. So when we do something wrong, we deserve to be punished. Actually, we deserve death. We deserve separation from God. But instead he sent someone else to take that place. And that was Jesus. So in his grace, he sent his son Jesus to take our place, to take the place that we couldn't, when we couldn't match up to what God ask from us so we've all been blessed in an undeserving way it's just about accepting that accepting God's call on your life accepting when he comes to the market when you're just stood there doing nothing and he says to you I want you I want you to come and be part of what I'm doing I want you to come and be part of my kingdom then you have a, a opportunity to accept that so we need to see things through the eyes of grace, through the lens of grace, and we'll be able to celebrate when 
people are blessed around us, we'll be able to celebrate when people come into God's kingdom, where it's not about how long we've been there, but it's about the fact that God is gracious and he wants us there and he's made a way for us to be there. So I just wanna encourage you, the next time that someone around you is blessed in whatever way, even if you don't think they deserve it at all, that actually you celebrate with them. Because then celebration, like that's a benefit to us as well. We get to be a part of this. We get to see what God is doing and be a part of it. And I wanna encourage you as well to go a step beyond that. Because as part of God's kingdom, we're not only ones who celebrate when people are blessed, but we're actually ones who can be the blessing. We're ones who can carry the grace and be that to people around us. So as grace is a, a part of the culture here at KDM, we wanna be people who are known in the city for blessing, for people who are known for, for blessing people when they don't deserve it. And we can celebrate when that happens because we know how much we've been blessed. So I wanna pray for us all today. I wanna pray that we will see things through the lens of grace and that we can celebrate and also carry that around us, carry it to the world around us, carry it to the people around us.